Hi, Dr. Nikita Visniak, and today we're going to go through skull for Raymond. So, a couple of things to start with. Some basic orientation. What can we see on the front of the skull? Looking inside the eye socket, we can definitely see the optic canal, superior orbital fissure, and down here is the inferior orbital fissure. Some basic orientation to start. Just want to make a comment on this model, how excellent this dissection is. You can see the frontal sinus here has been peeled back, some labeling of the muscle attachment points superior and inferior alveolar nerves. Absolutely amazing dissection on this. So let's go ahead and delve deeper into the foramen of the skull. So if we flip the skull around, we can see the coronal sinus running through this way and the sagittal sinus running back. And we can really see the interdigitation all the way down on what it looks like on real bone. If we peel back and take the skull cap off, we can see the space for the superior sagittal sinus. We'll go ahead and put that down. So a couple of key things for basic orientation. Number one, what do we want to be aware of? Right here we can see the cristae galli in the center and the cribriform plate to either side. And that cribriform plate would have little foramen in it for the olfactory nerve. So these are olfactory foramen in the cribriform plate right here. That's cranial nerve number one. Next thing we're going to come to is, for cranial nerve number two, the optic canal, which is right here. And the best way to do this in practice when you're first learning this, take pipe cleaners and run them through. So if I can put that pipe cleaner through, I can see the pathway for the optic canal, which is the pathway for the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. And if we look closely here, you can see it running through the optic canal inside the eye, just superior and medial to the superior orbital fissure. So we'll flip that back around for basic orientation. Taking that out. The next frame we're going to come to is the superior orbital fissure. So if I look here, maybe just at that angle, you can just see it. All of this structure there is superior orbital fissure. And I can put the pipe cleaner through, flip it around, and give you a list of all the structures that go through this huge superior orbital fissure. That includes the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4, the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, but only the first branch, so V1. The abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6, and the superior ophthalmic vein all go through the superior orbital fissure. Spinning back around into cranial vault here. What else do we see? We see this thing called the foramen rotundum, and that is this small little hole right here, and that we're not going to flip around for, but very tiny little hole. You can see it there, and you can see it right here. The foramen rotundum is for the trigeminal nerve, but for the second branch, which is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The next structure we should absolutely be aware of when we're looking at a model is this region right here, and this is the hypophyseal fossa. It's also this area where the hypophysis sits, and another name for the hypophysis you should be aware of from the hypophyseal portal system is the pituitary gland. So your master gland sits in this cella tersica hypophyseal fossa. So an interesting point for us to be aware of right there. The next structure we should be aware of is the foramen ovale. And what does ovale mean? Ovale means oval shaped, of course. So we went rotundum, now we're here to the foramen ovale. And what goes through the foramen ovale is the trigeminal nerve again, but this time, it will be the third branch of the trigeminal nerve, the mandibular branch going through here, and the accessory meningeal artery may run through there. There's some anatomical variation there, of course, that we see on most of our cadaver dissections. But the main thing to get, trigeminal nerve, V3 branch, foramen ovale. So if we look at the next foramen, on most anatomical drawings, they take perfect drawings and show you what they look like. But the foramen lacerum is this area right here on this actual real skull donor. And if we look at that, it's different from one side to the other. This is super common on real donors, normal anatomical variation. The foramen lacerum, and we'll put that in quotes, foramen lacerum, doesn't actually carry anything. It's often a big hole in the skull, but it's filled with a fascial membrane, basically. The next one we're going to see is the foramen spinosum is this structure right here, the foramen spinosum, and you can see the middle meningeal artery and vein come out of there. Foramen spinosum, middle meningeal artery and vein come through this structure. The next one for us to talk about is the carotid canal. The carotid canal is very important as it carries the car internal carotid artery coming up. So a couple of key things to get for this internal carotid artery, and I should also say it runs with the nerve plexus that surrounds the carotid artery as well, but the internal carotid artery has no branches until it gets inside the skull. Once the internal carotid artery gets inside the skull, it becomes the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, which would run up and around, and the posterior communicating arteries, all part of the circle of Willis. But if we flip this donor over, what can we see? There's the pathway of the internal carotid artery 
coming in and it would run through the carotid canal. Now, let me just clip this back up here a little bit better. Yep, flip it around. And there you can see the pathway for the internal carotid artery. Again, not to be confused with this big opening right down here, which is, let me flip it around. Not to be confused with this big opening right down here, which is the foramen lacerum, as opposed to the internal carotid artery or the carotid canal. The next structure we're going to talk about is the internal acoustic meatus, another very important structure. Here it is, internal acoustic meatus. This carries the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, and the vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve number 8. Both run through that structure and they run into the middle ear. And this is actually a super interesting thing right here because this area of your temporal bone, it's called the petrous portion of the temporal bone, is where your middle and inner ear are located. So your malleus, incus, and stapes are inside this structure, as well as your cochlea and semicircular canals for hearing and balance. Very complicated area. Normally in the lab, this is a hard one for us to dissect into, but I always encourage students to try and find it. So something interesting for you to be aware of. The next structure that we should be aware of, very important structure, is going to be the jugular foramen. So here we can see, drawn on this model, we can see the sigmoid sinus would come down to the confluence of sinuses, then it would come over here, this is all venous drainage, then it would come to the transverse sinus, into the sigmoid sinus, and then eventually through the jugular foramen. And a lot of key structures run through this jugular foramen. So key things that you should know, that you need to know that run through the jugular foramen include the sigmoid sinus, the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve number nine, the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, the accessory nerve, cranial nerve number 11, also known as spinal accessory, and the posterior meningeal artery also runs through that structure. So again, jugular foramen, very important structure for us to get. The next one for us to find is going to be the hypoglossal canal. This is for cranial nerve number 12, which supplies the tongue. But interestingly enough, this skull has, again, a very common anatomical variation. We can't actually see a very good hypoglossal canal. I could guess that maybe it's right here, and I could guess that maybe there's going to be a location somewhere in this area. Sometimes it runs as a separate frame and sometimes it doesn't, but this is just another point of real life anatomy where we see anatomical variation. Now the last and most important one for us to get is going to be this region right here, and this is the foramen magnum. And what goes through your foramen magnum are going to be key structures like your brain stem, including the medulla oblongata at this location. The meninges, which includes the dura mater, arachnoid, and pia mater. The vertebral arteries would run through here, and just to be clear on the vertebral arteries, they would have kinked around from the back side of C1. They would run up from a left vertebral artery, a right vertebral artery, joined together to the basilar artery, and it would start to make up the circle of Willis in this region right here. Next structure that would also run through the foramen magnum is going to be the spinal roots of the spinal accessory nerve, that's cranial nerve number 11, supplying your trapezius and SCM. And lastly, I just want to point out really quick on this donor, is here you can see the occipital condyles. If we take this skull and flip it over, there we can see the articulation points for the occipital condyles right here for CO, which is the occipital bone, onto C1. The main action there is going to be a little bit of flexion extension. You can tell by the shape of the occipital condyles that that's what it allows, just movement back and forth at the very upper portion of your spine. So, interesting variation, absolutely fantastic model, shows us a little bit of real, real anatomy, what it looks like. This model is so amazing, you can do things like take out the temporal bone and have a closer look at the regions around it. I just can't imagine how much time it actually took to make this model. Absolutely beautiful structure. So hopefully you found this useful and it'll help you study for your exams or whatever other, what other information you need here. Uh, actually, one more thing I want to point out, well, two more I guess I should say, is look at the level of detail down here on these pterygoid plates. So you can see the nasal septum right there. And then if I look down a little bit further, I can see the medial pterygoid plate, lateral pterygoid plate. They are not symmetrical. This is a normal finding, them not being symmetrical like this. And in fact, they're so unsymmetrical that this side has an extra foramen because it's got a bony connection right here creating an extra foramen at this location that would probably be unnamed. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Next thing I would show you too, just really quick, because a lot of people don't realize it, if I just shut off the lights here, you'll see how thin the bone of the skull actually is. Skull bones are so thin that light can shine through them. And here you can see light shining through the, through the frontal bone, the orbital surface of the frontal bone at this location right here, light is shining through it. Other key things you just might want to be aware of, just super quick, 
I know I should stop talking, but I keep on going. <laughs> Can't help it. Such good information here. It's fantastic. So you can also see the zygomatic arches coming through. You can see the external acoustic meatus if you wanted to. The mastoid process. You can see into the mandible. Like again, this is this is how amazing this dissection is. If we take, we can peel back the side with the teeth, and you can see how teeth are actually implanted into the mandible here. Absolutely stellar to see that. Same thing here on the front, like the time it would take to do this, to cut this away like this. Oh, this is excellent. Now what can you see? This is a view of the maxillary sinus right here. So if someone has sinusitis, you can see how big that maxillary sinus actually is. You can fold back these regions of bone very delicately, very delicate model. Click, move the teeth out of the way, click. This right here is the mental foramen. Uh, what else can we see done very well on this is you can also see the frontal sinus, how they've chiseled away the bone right here and left the inside wall of that frontal sinus intact. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Even looking into the nose, you can see all the variation in the cone and the shapes of the ethmoid bone. This is normal anatomical variation here that you just don't get with plastic models or looking in a textbook. What else? We can peel this area back if I just get it out of the way. And there you can see, oh, excellent. There you can see the outside of the frontal sinus, how they kept it intact. And here you can see the inside of the frontal sinus and how it would connect into the upper portion of your nasal cavity. So if you have sinusitis, that's what's involved there. Inflammation in that region. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fantastic. So any questions, leave them below in the comments. And I thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you found this useful.